baza nike de 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 awa dolu ya da da la baza ya ka de 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 rato je de 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 come on 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 ra va da 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 baza ya de le de de ja do je de 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 ja da ka da la re de de Rabadi, and Pocose, 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 a Balusia de 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 de. Come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray. Zabrada, Ianta, Iante Bede, as Yabadaba, Iacabadaba, Iampaladaba, come on, pray, come on, pray. Lanto Zede, a Bazadu Zadadaba. Yanta valade, come on pray, come on pray. In palu zede de, as yanta kade, yam palada vaza, yam telebede, yam kabada va, rapada zon telebede, yam tapalada vayade, yam tapalavada, eko palada vayade. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Ah, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, Jehovah. Oh, my. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jehovah. Oh, my. we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Say, we thank you, Lord. We thank. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah. Oh, my. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah. Oh, my. One more time. We thank you, Lord. Amen. I hope you can hear me. All right. And, um, we want to believe God that tonight will be another night where the Lord will visit us and the Lord will bless us. Amen. You see, what you are doing is that in the realm of the spirit, you are building blocks in your spiritual life. Are you understanding me? Are you with me? You are, you are building what spiritual blocks that will help you to grow. Are you understanding me? In the past week, we've been dealing with Joseph. Someone say Joseph. Say Joseph. We've been looking at the life of Joseph and what God did in the life of Joseph and what we can learn out of the life of Joseph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the first week, we looked at forgiveness. I, I hope you remember. And we talked about how Joseph was able to forgive his brothers. Are you with me? And some of us, we echoed or we voiced out that sincerely the the um, the spirit of forgiveness is true but the ability to try to still have that relationship with a person after you forgiving that person is a no-go area like that should not happen to my life and we understood that what joseph did was joseph forgave his brothers and not only forgave his brothers, but he even lent to his family as well. And because of what he did, he stopped farming in his home. 
Are you understanding me? So apart from Joseph having to forgive his brothers, we also learned that we also learned that he also gave to them. He told them that he wanted to see his father and his father came. Scripture makes us understand that he felt sorrowful. Hallelujah. And we learn that we have to forgive and not only to forgive, but we have to forget. Are you understanding me? Hallelujah. And then in the week two, we learn about Joseph's life concerning leaving his coat. How many of us remember leaving his coat? Hallelujah. Maybe I should just stay here and ask some questions. But we learn about Joseph leaving his coat and we understood that there are times where you have to what flee from certain things. We talked about lust of the flesh and a lot of things because the Bible said, and Joseph left his coat and he fleed. So we came to understand that there are certain things that you cannot walk. You have to run from it. Hallelujah. And I believe that most of us were blessing to that as well. But tonight we want to look at something very important. Somebody say important. Oh, I can't hear you say important. Something very, very important. And if we consider it well and we understand it well, it will bless us. Hallelujah. So we are at part three of our series, Fit Under Fire. Somebody say Fit Under Fire. Say faith under fire. And today we want to look at administrative or administrate a dream or administrate the dream. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to take my scripture from um, Genesis chapter 37 verse 5. Genesis 37 verse 5. Genesis 37 verse 5. But before we read a scripture, I want to ask, um, anybody can answer it, um, is that in your normal life, how do you feel or what do you do exactly if you have had dreams? This is not prophecy or these are dreams where you've had dreams, you've seen yourself. We want to put ourselves in the life of Joseph. You've had dreams. You've seen yourself here, here, here. But for so long a time, it's not coming to pass. You are, like, it's like you are not making any headway. But you, the same person, you have dreams about some individuals. And it works for them. Like they, they see success in, in that area of their life. And for you, it's like, it's just a standstill. I want us to take comment. Experiences, live experiences, in, in, in a place like that where you find yourself, usually, how is your frustration? Like, I mean, if there is frustration, where do you exert your frustration? <laughs> Can I get anybody to? Is it geared toward God? Is it toward family? Is it you have you see yourself in dreams and you see yourself in some some area of your life, but and not even dreams concerning you. Sometimes you dream about people, you tell them. Or even if you don't tell them, you see that at the end of the day, they are at this particular stage of their life. But you, it's like nothing is going on. How many of us have experienced that before? Let me put it that way. Good. So let's hear from pastor. Say, I mean, in cases like, we want to be practical. See, that's why we are in our believers. We want to be practical. Like most cases like that, how do you feel? You know, and if there are certain questions that you even ask yourself, like just one or two of these questions. We want to 
we want to see how your answer or somebody's answer will fit into what we want to study tonight. Can we get him a microphone, please? He has a microphone. All right. In fact, uh, yeah. I, I don't like I don't divert my anger to any other person, but I still keep on asking God yeah. to do for me. Yeah. Just as, uh, it has been done for the other person that I prayed for or I helped to pray for or I had a dream and I told him and it has been fulfilled. Mm. I know that my own will also come. Mm. That is the encouragement I always give to myself. And sometimes too, I look at the, the, um, our fathers in, in, in the scriptures, how some of them uh, were patient enough to wait. Father Abraham, for instance, had to wait for more than 30 years for Isaac to come. And uh, even at that time, he was 100 years. He was waiting. And the Bible also says that Father Jacob had to be cheated for 10 times. His wages were varied for 10 times. And I'm sure it was uh, varied, you know, downwards. Mm. And so, uh, he, but for all this time, he didn't leave. He was still at Laban's house until the day that God glorified himself in his life. So I always uh, encourage myself that even though he tells us uh, it shall surely come to pass one day. Amen. Amen. Please let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a great personal, you know, personal experience or, you know, having to, you know, know where to channel some of these frustrations. I mean, can I get anybody else? All of you, you are, you are Daniel or you are Hosea or you are Micaiah. Let's look at Genesis 37, 5. It says that, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet the more. Genesis 37, 5. It says that, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it, huh? It's there, right? He told it his brethren or to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Hallelujah. Now, the phrase here we are looking at, and Joseph dreamed a dream. And Joseph what? Dreamed what? A dream. How many of us don't dream? If you are here, you don't dream. Let me see. Maybe, maybe yours, you don't know whether to call it a dream or you don't understand what's called a dream. Maybe, you're, maybe you want us to help you today. Maybe you've been seeing some pictures, but I don't know whether it's a dream. <laughs> uh, why is that? Uh, uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Please, if you are here, you know what is a trance. Let me see. Wave your hand. You know what's called a trance? Trance. Okay. You know, the hands that are not really up is like, they are sure, but they are not sure. And you see, they want to be careful. I don't tell them that respond. Hallelujah. I want to believe that everybody here dreams one way or the other. Hallelujah. And some of us, our, maybe, maybe we should use this opportunity to just go a bit deeper about, about it. But some of us, our dreams are always one dimensional. It's always we are in the past. It's always we are in the past. Not you don't see yourself in the future. It's always yeah. Always you see some guy, guy you went to school, is um is Nesri, Nesri or kindergarten, if you could even remember. Or or primary six. Always is this guy. Is it that you see him in a football field? You see him in a bus stop. You see him everywhere. Are you understanding me? 
and we don't see anything about the future. It's always about the past. Some people have dreams and the dreams they have is every time in the classroom and wearing some old uniform like that. And some of us, we joke with our dreams because God speaks to us in dreams. And tonight, as we are dealing with admin, um, administrate a dream or the dream, we would want to just go a bit deeper about dreams. Some of you here, immediately you just close your eyes, you are seeing something. Some of you, unless when you, you, you eat very heavy before you, you see something. So that one, should we call it a self-dream or is it a dream? <laughs> it's still a dream. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm a, I have a dream. I eat, I, maybe I eat banku tonight and I dream and I'm eating banku. How do we, can somebody tell me, how do you, how do you explain or how do you differentiate a self-dream or how do you tell that this is a self-dream and is a dream from God or a dream that is being initiated from somewhere you don't know? How do you tell you, everybody has, everybody does, you know. Can you get a microphone, please? Yes, you can. Is when you wish for something, mm -hmm. you think about it, you go to sleep, and you dream doing the exact thing you wished for. However, like you said, if I've eaten banku this evening, and not that the banku was so tasty but I go to sleep and I dream eating banku, I would take it seriously. Because, mind you, the enemy uses what you like best to get hold of you. So probably your favorite is banku. You ate, you enjoyed that evening. And he came into your dream with banku stuff. So that you should take, that should not be self-dream. Because it's not that you were thinking about the banku you ate, how sweet it was, how t delicious it was, and you dreamt. You just slept, you just ate, and you slept. But self-dream is, then you, while thinking about it, you fall asleep, and you dream, and what you thought of no is the same thing you are seeing in your dream. That is what I think is termed self-dream. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Any, any other? Some of us, we don't dream. Oh. And we are the most dangerous people on this planet. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want us to just stay here a bit. And then we can go. Yeah. Let's take from you, sir. Amen. Amen. So um, when it comes to dreams, mm -hmm. I believe that uh, God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us discern. So at times when you dream, when you wake up, you realize that, you know, this one, God is trying to tell me something. At times when you wake up, you know that, oh, this is just me. And most of the time, as human beings, we usually dream, if it's a cell dream, it will be about some things you already know. But then if, it's, if it has a spiritual essence, you usually see something new or something symbolizing something new. Yeah. So that's my question. Let's, let's celebrate him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Any other? We have technocrat here. We have bibliocrat. So the, the thing is that, please let's handle um, the children well, okay? The thing is that um, you cannot trivialize whatever dream you have. Because at the, at, the, at the stage of your maturity, you cannot actually tell the kind of dream you are even having. 
Are you with me? Sometimes you can dream, you can have some dialogue with some friend in the evening and then you dream about them in the night. Is it God speaking to you about something? Is it you, you've just gone to sleep about it? There is a, there is a, 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 a thin line when it comes to what am I seeing and what is the meaning of does it have something to do with my life a dream itself is a series of thought that is our dictionary says that is a series of thought images and sensation occurring in a person's mind during sleep so that is why people say some dreams are self dreams when you think about something think about it like for instance i give you a visa to the u.s and in the next five hours, you are seeing yourself in Delta Airline with some nice hair hoster, you know, trying to give you some tea. And you imagine yourself in the first class and all that. And you dream, dream by force in the, in, the, in the plane. Are you with me? But there are certain times where you can have a dream and you're like, ah, where is this coming from, man? Hey, I, I never, I, I didn't even think about it. It just hit me like that in, the sub, in my subconsciousness. But this guy we are studying here, he was a dreamer. And let's look at some of, some of the, not the dream that he dreamt, but the ability to interpret dreams. Hallelujah. Our extended half night service is going to be very, very deep as we are going to deal with spiritual giftings. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach a bit about spiritual giftings and then we'll allow the Holy Spirit to move within us concerning spiritual giftings. And I want to believe God that after that meeting, that many that cannot interpret tongues will interpret tongues. Those that can't speak will speak. Those that desire the gift of prophecy, the gift of prophecy will come upon them. It's something that God has burdened me, has laid upon my heart. I want to believe God for that bed, that release into the atmosphere in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. I can't wait for that day. Amen. He says that, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him more. Is, is, is that to say that when we dream from this, many of us will interpret it, keep it to yourself. Now, I imagine I have a dream and I saw you give me $5,000. And I, I come and tell you, I had a dream. I saw you give, uh, you give me $5,000. Not for integrity, you say, Not for integrity. Imagine I have, I, I said, I, ha I had a dream. I saw you, you, um, um, you know, you took me on a journey like five times. Maybe the interpretation is that anytime I'm traveling, you should just fool your car and take me and bring me back. Not for integrity. Someone says, ah, this dream, no. This man, he wants free ride. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Joseph was a dreamer. But the thing is that he told his brothers about his dreams. And in the body of Christ, and most of us, that is how we, we, how we have found ourselves, is that when we get certain dreams, because of the nature of the dream, we would love to keep it to ourselves. Listen, I had the opportunity to speak to um, somebody, a lady, and she had, we were speaking about, she had a dream, and then, she did not understand, so she wanted interpretation. And I said, okay, share it. And I prayed about it. And the Lord opened my eyes and started speaking to me about every detail about her dream. And then I explained it to her that this is what it means. And then she said that, ah, she should have, had, she should have told me this maybe about earlier because it has already happened. And then I told her that, in fact, most of the dreams that you are having, 
it has a meaning. He said, man of God, are you sure? I said, I'm sure. It's okay, then I will tell you the ones I've been having. I said, okay, write it and send it to me. And then she wrote it and sent it to me. A lot of them, I took my time. Chapter by chapter of each dream, prayed about it and interpreted it. Each of them and all of them was something that was happening in her life she never knew. Sometimes you would, um, I remember um, four years ago, a guy here, some, somebody she knew had a dream. And in a dream, it was like, the, the, the narrative of the dream itself, if, if I'm to tell you, you might say, no, I think you watch some Jack Chan movie. Or I think you watch Rambo, Rambo 5. And maybe because of that, you're having this dream. The dream, and you see helicopter, and you see you are, you are climbing. Ah, you are laughing. <laughs> ah. Ay. Hmm. And you are climbing some staircase. And then you see that whilst you are climbing, you see people also descending. And then you climb and you enter a room and in the room you see one of your bosses all these helicopter in this dream all and you see one of your bosses there and then you have an interaction with your boss and something happened and there is an information released to you and then you decide to now come back descend the staircase and then you wake up from your dream and somebody tells you what is the meaning of this man of god i'm seeing helicopters and all that in my dream but it had a meaning. I'm telling you, every detail of it had a meaning. Even her color of the outfit she was wearing, there was an interpretation to it by the will of God. And the end result of the meaning of the dream was that there was going to be a downsizing in the company. And that she's going to escape from it because of a kind of relationship she has with a boss there and not a, a compromised relationship but a good relationship. Are you understanding me? All those helicopter or was those helter skelter just to sort of boomerang in the company for people to just scatter around and all that. Are you understanding me? Some of you have dreams and you are like you wake up and I know people that write because they have the tendency of forgetting. They write, immediately they wake up, it's like they have an encyclopedia, a, a diary, the big one. Every dream, they will put the date and they will write it. Are you understanding me? They write it. Recently, LP was telling me that most of the prophecies in this house, we need to document it because recently I was there when someone called me and said, Four years ago, there was a prophecy in Oyarifa. And it has happened now. He said, ah, she was not even there in the service. But somebody was there. And they told her about it. He said, Yababe come like four years ago. Are you honest? So there are times where you need to what, document what some of your dreams. Because it has a, you see, and as far as you get the meaning, eh, you have to take it seriously. That is also your part of what God wants to what, show you concerning your life. So if you are here and all the time you fall down and you, you don't see anything till morning, a serious man. We need to rewind your spirit, retune your spirit, rewater your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah now if you are a believer I mean the least is you have to at least there should be some dreams in your life your spirit should be open up to the spirit world are you understanding me say bibi babe toa at least you are supposed to see I know people that their dreams are so accurate so accurate 
accurate. On point. Are you understanding me? Dreams and they would see the individuals, their faces, their dresses, the, what they will even say to them and all that. So whilst the people are speaking, they are like smiling because they've seen it in their dreams before. Are you on a, and these are not individuals who say they are they have a they have a calling or no. These are these are believers who are serving God in truth and in spirit. So can we say a dream is a gift? Can we say that a dream is a gift? Joseph had a gift not only to dream but to interpret. He had a gift to interpret dreams as well. And the Bible says that in Genesis chapter 40 verse 5, it says that, and they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpretator of it. Are you understanding me? And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me then, I pray you. Listen, we want to believe God that after we go through our extended night or evening service, may God give you the ability to interpret dreams. Not you always you running for people to help you, but you will also interpret your dreams. Are you understanding me? Me, me, I interpret people's dreams. Me, sometimes my dreams I don't I, I can't interpret. <laughs> and I have to look for external solutions. Are you understanding me? So there are times where you need to pray that God, I need help to what to understand what my dreams. And Joseph says that it says that Joseph says that interpretation what belong what to God. It means that it's God that would interpret. So that is why when people come to me and say, I have this dream, I say, hold on. Let's pray about it. What's God speaking about it? Are you understanding me? There is a general way of saying, I saw this. This is the meaning. Are you understanding? When you tell somebody this, I saw. This, I saw. This, I saw. They will tell you. But in that particular dream, what is God telling you? That's what, it, that's what we are looking for. Are you understanding me? But in that particular dream, what is God speaking to you about? Is it in the past? Is it in the present? Are you understanding me? Someone said dreams are powerful. Some of you here, you dream and you close your mind. And say, ah, it's one of those things. Ah, hmm, you are in trouble. See, some of you have to say, God, the dreams I dreamt five years ago, bring them back to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, it might shock you that some of the things that happen in your life, eh? the Lord revealed it to you in a dream. Maybe the package you wanted, it, it did not come that way. Are you understanding me? So Joseph is saying that the interpretation of dreams, they belong to what? To God. He says, tell them, I pray you. And Genesis 41 verse 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream again. Hmm. You see, if you look at the scriptures we've read, you realize that dreamed a dream runs through it. 37 5 it says that dreamed a dream 45 dreamed a dream and then 41 15 pharaoh says that i have dreamed what a dream and he says and there is none that can interpret it and i have i have heard say of thee that thou can't understand a dream to interpret it hallelujah but Bible makes us understand that Joseph had the grandest personal dreams of anyone in the Old Testament. And God revealed to him that his brothers and his forefathers and the tribes of Israel, they will all bow to him. Indeed, in retrospect to this, apparently, that it took Joseph's intervention concerning his dreams to take his family out of famine. Are you understanding me? And this is what dreams what can do. Hallelujah. 
But like most Bible characters, the road of Joseph's dream did not end as he wanted it or did not go as what he wanted it. Are you understanding me? You dream and you see people bowing, but the next day you are in prison. What kind of dream is that? Are you following? Are you following? So the guy dreams and he sees the spectacular of his life. Imagine that you dream and, and hear, um, you see everybody is bowing before you, but your life is actually in a mess. For like 10 years of your life, everything what is in a mess. His brothers were cruel to him, but this same guy dreamt and then the guys were bowing. Look at somebody say, dream a dream. Say, dream a dream. The Bible says in Genesis 37, 19 to 20. And they said to one another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Come now therefore and let's slay him and cast him into some pit. And he will, and we will say, Some evil beast had devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. So that tells that there are powers that, what, that will fight against what, your dreams. So, let me ask you, is it possible that a dream will not come to pass? Or why are you looking at me like, yeah? you are like fake like that? I, <laughs> you are real people here. Is it possible? Hallelujah. So, let's discuss this. What will make a dream not come to pass? <laughs> what? Dream rambles. <laughs> yes, yes, anybody. Yes, Hello, Nana. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, Reverend, as you, yes, sir. as you are saying, I think uh, when you dream and then you don't pray about it, there are people, as Mommy said, there are, there are yeah, evil spirit that fight our dreams. Until you pray about it, it will not come to pass. Because I remember hmm. way back in 20, 2015, whenever I dream, I'll be walking on a bridge. Hmm. I'll get to the center of the bridge and then we'll just fall in. Hmm. About three times, I kept on praying. Hmm. So on the, uh, on the fourth one, I crossed. And that was the year I traveled. Come on, somebody clap your hands. That's why I love believer service, you know? Uh -huh. mm. So I think you would have to pray more. Mm. Because if I had taken it lightly, probably I would have to be in my zeros. Mm. I stood and I prayed and it came to pass. Wow. Let's, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus for this. Any, any other dreams? Yeah. Um when yes man of god it's 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 all boiled down to the word a prayer mm. because if you i also believe that if you dream about you know uh, what i term satanic dreams things that are or dreams that uh, looking for your downfalls and you enter into a warfare yeah. pray over it 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 was not come to pass mm. Yeah, so that that's one one way that a dream dreamt cannot uh, come to pass. Wow, wow! Let's let's clap for him, please. Let's take one more, one more, one more. Yes, behind her. Amen. Amen. Um, sometimes to. Um, let's say you had a good dream about a progress in your life. Sometimes our lifestyle can hinder our dreams. Mm. Some of the things that we do, it can hinder our dreams. Lifestyle. Let's, let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate her. So there are a lot of... Is it, so it's not a straight jacket that I have a dream, it just comes to pass. Like what pastor said, what you said, what she said. It's not a straight jacket. There, a lot of effort would have to go into it. And some of us, our dreams, a, a particular kind of dream is, re, is all the time is repetitive in what? In our lives. We see it all the time. It shows all the time. 
particular type of dream or kind of dream, I should say. We see it all the time. For instance, this dream that you, you had. A, a family or somebody had a dream and she was um, looking to travel outside. She had done everything. There were some forces at the office and all that. She had a dream. She got to the airport. And then some macho man said, I won't let you go. Enter. Yeah. Rambo. <laughs> Charlie, this is spiritual Rambo. I said, I won't let you enter. And you see, when she woke up from that dream, something happened that delayed her from traveling to the United States. You don't look at someone and say, don't joke with dreams, man. <laughs> Are you understanding me? So sometimes you, listen, Obi will say, me so Diana, the, excuse me, excuse me, ye the, uh, physis is menim na yesi mindi physis na. And I was sorry, I now I cope cook anum. Now say radi me dasi. That's that's serious, man. Are you understand? Ube suda ani yedi yedi bibia swawa umu se u bre. Bana wafani normal. Yeah. The Reverend, I think uh, four months back. Yeah. My father-in-law had a dream. Mm. In the dream, he had been bitten by a snake. Mm. He woke up in the morning and his two legs were all swelling. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Hi. Hmm. <laughs> this one is it's not Rambo. <laughs> this is what? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's you see, and you see, as believers, eh, we we joke with certain things and we joke with our dreams. Most of us have some of you here, you are you are serious dreamers. But it, the point is that you just trivialize your dreams. Unless it's a dream where you seen some anaconda, that's when you are like by fire, by tender. Are you with me? But dream where you see maybe somebody is handing over to you some document and all of a sudden you see they've just canceled it. Some maybe check they've canceled. Or maybe you, are, you see you are on a table, you are writing checks and all of a sudden instead of you writing figures, you are just canceling the checks like that. And you woke up and your mind is telling you that maybe some people want to take your money so you are canceling it. <laughs> 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 but you see the fact that you do not you, you need to get the understanding of the dream are you understanding me but you see look at Joseph for how many years of his life his dream that he dreamed never came to pass and he was in prison rather but Joseph did something and I want us to learn aside that his dreams did not you know, was not realized in the time that he was even looking forward to. Joseph was not selfish. He unselfishly gave himself to others. Are you understanding me? So that tells us that in our work with God, when we are even delayed in life, that does not mean we should quell into our shell. Are you understanding me? We should be who what we are. And you see, whilst Joseph was interpreting people's dream to him. He never knew that God was using that as a way. <laughs> ah, a way to what? To establish him. A way to what? To bring his dream what? Into fulfillment. Look at the path where God wanted to what? Take him. For him to finally what? See his dream come into fulfillment. Are you understanding me? So your dreams being delayed should not deter you from doing what you have to do. Your God mandate that God would has given to you. Are you understanding me? Are you with me? So what Joseph did, which we are looking here, was he, he administrates dreams. He ministers. He interprets dreams to others. 
If it was you, I'm sure you would say, Hey, now me call come me dream me and a enemy. My name is Shep Brizini. But no. Hmm. It did not put fear in him. He went out and he was even in term. Listen, Joseph could have said that, ah, but this dream, you see, the truth is, he did not even interpret his dream. Oh, it was his father. Is it in the Bible? He was his father. But the guy had the grace to interpret dream. But he says that the interpretation of dreams belongs to God. And I believe that in that season, God gave him that grace because God knew where he was going to send him to. Are you understanding me? Hallelujah. Somebody say he dreamed a dream. He dreamed a dream. Re Reverend, please. I Genesis want to, 39. I want to ask a question. Yes, sir. Ask a question. So, uh, could it be that uh, can we ha have somebody who administer um, dreams, interpretation of dreams, whatever it is, but he or she herself doesn't dream? So, I mean, Okay, so let me throw it, then I'll, I'll come in lastly. <laughs> anybody? Can anybody help him? Everybody dreams. So. I think he established the fact that Obi in Sunday, and it's true. Obi on wow. Sunday. When you speak to certain people, okay, you finish your dialogue and then I'll come in. <laughs> so I was asking that if um, does this person dream or does he dream at all? <laughs> then he dreams. So, no, it's not his business. His, name, his, name, his main business is the fact that every dream he can administer interpretation to it, can interpret it So, directly. I ask that because um, I want to use myself as an example. I hardly dream. I'm an occasional dreamer. Let me put it this way. However, I am I have that grace to interpret dreams. So you don't need to be a constant dreamer to be able to have that grace. As we all know, um, he chooses to give to whom he feels like giving it to. So I do not think one needs to be a dreamer. Yes, there could be someone who dreams and is also able to interpret dreams. However, I'm sure that there are people who do not dream or hardly dreams, but tell them your dream and they will give you the dito dito to it. It is a gift and it's a grace. So, um... What I would also, it's like a follow-up question to Pastor Kobe's question. So are we saying that if, on the days, LP, you said sometimes you don't dream, right? So you dream occasionally. So on the days you don't dream, is it like the way when the TV is off, is black like that? Or things happen, but you don't see them to be dreams? So I don't, I don't dream when, especially, funny enough, eh? I never dream at night. Mine comes in the afternoon, in the mornings. Let me, like I'm on leave right now. I'm home. In the afternoon, I will have a lot, series of dreams. But at night, especially when I'm working, I feel like I'm late, you're tired. I don't even, yes. But whilst, Oh, my mind take a nap. That's when I get my dreams. So it could be that, and when I dream, it, 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 is, it, it, it becomes serious. It's a serious business when I, oh yes. But sometimes if I do not, 
I consult him. So um, with this, um, Reverend, I would want to ask, so is it, does it mean that you have to posture yourself in a way to actually receive a dream? That, like the way um, we can have uh, a service, right? And then um, you are not in position for the prophecy. You are not ready for it. I mean, so, you know, sometimes Reverend says that some people, when you look at their faces, they don't want, they don't want you to speak to them. Remember <laughs> Kamasa? But there are those who that welcome it. Like they want to hear something from God. So does he mean that if I'm going to bed and then I, I, after praying before sleep, I go like, God, I want to hear from you. Then I dream. It is from God, right? But then when I go to bed mistakenly, like I was tired, I go home, I drop my stuff, my pack. Then they, all of a sudden you see that it's morning. You don't even remember <laughs> So does it mean that it was because you, you weren't ready for it? Or that one is also normal that sometimes you just sleep and it'll be like the blank TV. There is nothing. That's, that's what I just want to ask. So we have, we have, I mean, just to bring a conclusion to all your questions. We have individuals, when you speak to them, do you dream? Mm -hmm. Because one way or the other, your subconsciousness will try to, to contact your spirit in a dream world. This is a funeral where the person was a female, but me. For me, me in person, I don't know. I don't go close to a dead bodies so unless it's, it's a relative or something. So even when they say we should go, I'll be wandering around and I'll not go. But so I was doing my thing at the funeral. I didn't, but I was told that he is a, a female. And I just wake up in the morning and then I pray, cancel, bind within some. Some minutes, I don't know, some minutes, and then I relaxed. You know what? Within that same period, my, my, my stepsister died. <laughs> so I said, ah, so I was telling Pastor Michael that ah, this thing, then he said, hey, then also from now going, you have to be particular about your dreams because it has also happened to him in the past. He had dreams about his, his mother and it's like he wake up in the morning, he just canceled it and then it came to pass. So he gave me that warning that from now onwards, I should be very careful about my dream. And not that one alone. It's like I'm, I'm that person, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm trying to tell you that dreams are, are real. I don't know. Unless maybe you are not in the position. LP says he doesn't dream, but he has explained himself that maybe when you close from work, the, the load, work load them things. That one, it, it's just like, you know, so, but he said if he's on leave and in a car, it will come. So, everybody dreams. So, my dreams superb. Yes, but like LP, I don't constantly dream and yeah, but if I dream, it's, it's surely, so I, I don't know, maybe a uh, pastor will tell us, uh, sorry, Reverend will tell us more about, but dreams are real. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's why I mean, you said it. I mean, you need to, you need to, you see, the spirit will make contact with your spirit. This your, this thing is just housing. Is a container, as you say. It's just housing your spirit, you know. So, if there's going to be any contact, it will be spirit contacting spirit. You see, that is why, as a believer, you need to build your your spirit, man. It's very very important. 
Because that is where it becomes weak and then there is a loophole or there is an avenue for the enemy to what? To contact. So, dreams are, are very important. I, I, I don't want to use the word it's real or it's very important. And you need to at least, at least take it seriously. No matter what it is. It might be as, as foolish as it, it looks like, but it might have a meaning. It might have, I'm telling you, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience. It might have a meaning. Hallelujah. I want us to, yes, yeah. Let me, let, let me read this scripture and then I'll take from you. And then, um, so Genesis 39, 5 to 6, NLT. This is part of the first dream. You see, because Joseph refused to remain uninvolved, God blessed him as he served. So it's very important that even though what you are hoping God to do has not come to fruition, you still get yourself what involved. And the Bible says from the day Joseph was put in charge, the Lord began to bless Potiphar for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs began to run smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't, he didn't have to worry uh, in the world except to decide what he wanted to eat. The jealous dream in Genesis 39, 22 to 23. Before long, the jailer put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The chief jailer had no more worries, no more worries after that because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him, making everything run smoothly and successful. The cupbearer's dream, Genesis 40, 12 to 15, and then, two, and then 23, NLT. I know what the dream means, Joseph said. Listen, I know what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches mean three days. Within three days, Pharaoh would take you out of prison and return you to your position as his chief cup bearer. You see, that is why in the entire Bible, Joseph was one person that his interpretation of his dream was so, so accurate. May that grace fall upon you. Ah, may that grace fall upon you. He says that Pharaoh would take you out of prison and return you to your position as the chief cup bearer. And please have some pity on me when you are back in his favor. We know what happened. Hmm. And come Dream ni be me. At least come and water your man of God feet a little. And you see, God, I believe that God wanted to tell Joseph that it's me that I will put you there, not man. For his case, it was unique. I believe it's a place to clap your hands. Hmm. Some people might have used this opportunity to take some, some pound sterling. I interpret your dream from you. For you, it's thousand, thousand pounds. Scripture says that for I was kidnapped from my homeland. So he was even narrating to them, to him, what he had been through. And say that, and now I am here in jail. But I did nothing to, to deserve it. 23. Pharaoh's cup bearer, however, promptly forgot all about Joseph. Never giving him another thought. Immediately he came to pass. He said, oh yeah, you are on your own. I'm sure you will die in this prison. Thank you for interpreting my dreams. But the attitude about, about this whole thing is that Joseph still got involved. Are you, with, are you with me? He was not shaking. He still what God was involved. So no matter how your dreams might delay, it doesn't mean go and fall asleep. No, get involved. Are you understanding me? How do I get involved? I still pray. I still read my Bible. I still do what I have to do. I am still what I am called what to be. Are you understanding me? Look at somebody say get involved. Say get involved. I want to read something from William James. It says that 
the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitude of mind. Unquote. David Brinkley quoted, he said, a successful man is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at him. Unquote. With the bricks that others would have thrown at him. Look at somebody say, don't give up. Don't give up. Say that dream will come to pass. But don't give up. 20 years, Joseph decided to administrate. He decided to be involved. Are you understanding me? He, he didn't wait to be asked. He said, I will do it. You need that interpretation. God can interpret it. I will do it. And he decided to offer and take care of what? Of the very details. And behold, I love Joseph because he was enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic about the dream. And once he was always involved, the Lord did everything that he ever asked of. Are you understanding me? And I, I, I want us to all be, take this mindset of Joseph. Maybe some of you have had dreams some years ago. You haven't seen it come to pass yet. It's not over until oh uh, are you are you can i get real people here it's not over until what let's take from our man our man man behind there and then uh Reverend, yes please uh, uh, is that the uh, devil give uh, dreams that's a very good question here he says does the devil give dreams anybody If, if you are not a believer, if you are not a believer, if you are not a born again, and the devil can give you some dreams. Um, I also say yes, but not necessarily because you are not a believer. But sometimes I think um, as where, where your mind is, um, or where, where you are at a point in time would either give way for those things. Yeah. So um, sometimes even it's to scare you. I believe that, that sometimes it's to like shake you from um, it's, it's, it's like uh, you have sometimes you have dreams and then there's an intervention right? Something was happening in the realm of the spirit, and there was an intervention. Mm. So it is not just like you, it was just a dream. It was something trying to happen, and you were seeing it in the form of a dream. So the intervention that came there was God inter intervening on your behalf. So it wasn't God who was attacking you. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. You get you get where I'm coming from. So that's why I'm saying that yes. There are dreams that, yes, God gives them. There are dreams that might be things that are happening, but it's a form of attack that is happening. That's why you are seeing it. Yeah. So God, God, yeah, God actually, that, that's the thing. God permits the devil to do whatever he wants to do. Without God's permission, the devil can't. And then I, I believe that there is no, um, the, the devil doesn't have power. It is God's power. He's the source. He, he allows him to even have what he's using. Do, do you get it? So, yeah. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. Any other? So, you see, I, I, I think that the, maybe, uh, so I think I mentioned it last time that maybe if after we, we, we deal with faith under fire, we will look at the, the body, the spirit, and the soul. Most of us, we are confused about when we talk about body, spirit, and soul. What's body, what's spirit, what's soul? Some say spirit and soul, they are the same. What's that? How do they relate in terms of even our spiritual life, in terms of our, our growth, in terms of we as a believer and all? What's our understanding about spirit, body, and soul? Are you understanding me? 
when when um paul talks about the out of body experience and all that what are all these things and what does it really mean you see if there is if an evil spirit can contact a spirit to showcase or reveal herself or himself i'm using a he or a she because some spirit portray themselves as that if there is that contact in the spirit then there is that there, there, there is that same contact and there can be that same contact also in the dream world that the enemy can can reveal something to you in your dream world that is not of god but is of the devil are you understanding me yeah a man of god um he went for a program this is not to digress went for a program and then after the program he got to his hotel room and there was a woman sitting in his chair and he said what are you doing i'm sure some of you say hey we made him you hotel number 101 and 100 obey dali obi anfa you finish the program you open your hotel room there is a woman there how did you get her? said the woman is sitting down there is waiting for you i said man of god powerful ministration please sit down let's talk some of us that we can't even sleep under darkness we have to honor our light till morning it's only the day we watch Jet Li movies. That's when we can sleep and put off the light. So, if susum yini hun ye e omu yi omu hun chreni pa, susum to me yini hun chreni pa. I don't want to go into those things. You know, we don't want to glorify the enemy. You know, yeah, it's not important. But sometimes just a bit of education just to let us know some of these things. That an evil spirit can contact and sort of reveal certain things to you, you know. And the issue is not about, you know, sometimes yes, is 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 it permissible by God or not? But it depends on the individual. You know, if yourself you are not, uh, you know, your lifestyle is and you you already you see the video that the uh, one we posted on our page sometime is LP posted and all that. Is that those that are in their camp, they don't have time for them. Is you, you are saying that, why me trouble? Why is that when some blessing is coming, something will happen? Go to their camp and sell your soul and see. Hmm. They will open the floodgate for you, but your soul is already there. Are you understanding me? Listen, we know people that have literally gone to exchange their soul for money, for for some quote in quote prosperity exchange of just the soul so you can have spirit that can get can kind of contact with you so it's not like whatever you are seeing there is all the time is like it's being with a godly thing god is revealing to you but you one can say you the person you have to be strong as well that certain things cannot infiltrate into your spirit life no and try to engage you and force you into something is it god no it's not god are you understanding okay We did we are saying sounds too brave. Obey the best or not, we are saying in our area. What's that? Tell you, but die, Kyrie, boom, boom, oh, baby, hallelujah. You know, there was the, there was, we went for this meeting, and then there was this guy who was there, he never knew he was a wizard. Though. He said, we are we a wizard, we knew. I'm not a wizard. Say you are a wizard. He said, I'm not a wizard. Yayo, Yayo say Ponko. 
edua o machia o commissionu terminator 3 you are part of the the you are part of the assignment you know they move you to it and all that your 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 soul has been snared and they use you and all that and you never know hmm Oh, Lord, have mercy. I remember there was this um, confession about the woman that was... Uh, we don't want to glorify some of these things. But what do you think about tennis ball? I don't know about tennis ball, sir. So this baby was always sick, always sick. Hospital, the piano and the echo. Until there was prayer raised in the house, and then this revelation came about. Akwalano, they are done in the ball, and they had to say, "People don't believe things about the spirit, but they are there." This is not just to make you. We don't want to glorify darkness, but at least just to give you a full view about some of these things and, and what's happening there. Are you understanding me? There was a situation where one lady in the kingdom of darkness had to present blood that night. And a day before, there was so much fire in the house that blood could not be presented. And she had to present blood by force from somebody who was a member of the family. So you know what happened? She, was, she had to um, force a bench that she was sitting on to fall down and hit her leg. So while she was collecting the physical blood in the spirit, she was presenting the blood. That is amateur witchcraft. Amateur. Until all these revelations and all come in, like, huh? are you understanding me? You see, these things, they are. See, that is why we need to, we, when, we, when we are walking in our daily life, we need, to, we need to know that we are dealing with the spirit and dealing what, with the flesh as well. Are you understanding me? And these things, they are very, very, very what, important. And to just close with this, I would say that, um, so I'm telling you that it's not always like, there are sometimes it comes from the camp of the enemy as well, but the contact will also depend on your spirit as well. What build you soon soon with the word of God, with fasting, with prayer and all that. You are always sharp in the spirit. No. Contact is very, very minimal. 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 Even if there is, what will be, whatever is being planned, the Lord will just reveal to you about what is planning. Are you understanding me? Uh, what is planning? It's very, very important. I remember some years ago, we, um, we had somebody come to stay with us and uh, for a while. And uh, my mom told me this thing, that any time the lady comes to sleep in our room, I will not sleep the whole night. Not sleep. I was not like I was a believer. I was like, you know, praying tongues and all. Oh, just a normal young boy. I will not sleep the whole night. For consistently on any time that she will come because it was like a big hall, you know, and not like some of you, your comfort of your room was a big we put mattress on the floor, everybody is there like that. I will not sleep the whole like me pressa till morning. Until there was a revelation that Aquani a kaira boom boom. Kai. Are you understanding me? So my spirit was just battling with that foreign spirit that has entered there. And some of you, sometimes you can, 
Sometimes if there is, um, there, is, uh, there is a foreign spirit that comes to your territory, you can sense it that no, something is. Sometimes even in your offices, in your places, when people just come there, you can sense that no, no. Are you understanding me? Hallelujah. It's very, very important. But that is why it's also true that as a believer, you need to always build your spirit up. Because don't be like some of us in some years in secondary school when we prayed for a young boy and later we got the news that um, his father was And when we heard that now, we were checking whether our feet was really strong. Hmm. Now we're asking ourselves questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Are you strong? Are you strong? Attacks be a buy. And, hey. yeah, 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 yeah. Because the name on the guy himself was from a fetish. And some of us young guys, where God was lifting up, we went to lay hands. Break and go, break and go. And there was screaming. We thought that God was... Hmm. We didn't know what we were dealing with. But we had to strengthen our prayer and all that. Because it was not easy. Some of the guys, they fell sick and all that. Went home. So many things happened. So it's very important that what we build our spirit. That's why, you see, if you're a man of God, you don't just lay hands like that. No. It's not for fun. We don't just, you know just lay hands no there are some heads you don't <laughs> you don't touch <laughs> no you have to be you have to be led to do certain things it's not like it's a normal it's normality it's a culture so we just you know are you understanding me and i've had people that even in prayer meetings a man of god is everybody is a say I, I want to put my hand in my pocket for now <laughs> i don't want to lay because oh no you know you don't want trouble. Are you understanding me? Any question? <laughs> you guys, I, you, you guys are too real. Uh, you like to hear things. Oh. You hear more. Hallelujah. As we deal with the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. How many of you have had out of body experience? How many of you have had out of body experience? You don't understand what it means by out of body experience. Please stand up on your feet and let's pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody, I need, um, I, need, I need two people to tell me what you learned today. I need just two to tell me what you learned today. Can we pass the microphone around? What you learned today? Don't tell me you learned about witchcraft. <laughs> what you learned today, too. Two people, please. Quickly, yes, LP. Okay, so um, Joseph, regardless of what he was going, going through, being a dreamer himself and having a beautiful dream of his future, but had not seen it come to pass, did not just sit, but he got involved. Getting involved here means he prayed. He communed with God. Um, he did things that would get him closer to God. And in that doing, his dream was fulfilled. Amen. Amen. I want to, um, before you speak, uh, Mina G, I want to say something like, um, to add to that, if he was doing good, he never stopped doing good. He never let what was around him to deter him from doing good. Are you understanding me? And even doing that more, God even what opened what the door for him. He got involved in what you know the fact that he dreamt and his dream itself there was a question mark on it that landed him in prison. He was not afraid to help people get out of of, of their situation and even help them in their dreams. Are you into Niawiya? Make us a near papa, we a boy, but Obisuno 
a cobano, you know, it came in a way or a manner which it came to hurt you. You don't stop doing it. You still want get what involved because Joseph would have said, "Listen, let me just huh, let me just close my mind and think about something." But the same dream that he dreamed that got him to people were dreaming others other dream, and he said that I will I will help. And through the help, God would open doors for him. Let's take from Mina. Mina. Simply that dreams are not to be taken for granted. As simple as that. Yeah. Dreams should not be. That's just straight jacket, you know. Not, don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. Don't take it for granted. Amen. Shall we pray? Please hold somebody's hand. Just pray for that person. If you can pray in the spirit, you pray in the... If you cannot pray in the spirit, you say, Lord, I pray, empower, empower him or her. Come on, pray. Come on, pray right now. I see a reactivation, a reactivation. A million tabraze, a bresa di barata zanto brekete. I see a reactivation. Come on, pray. A rando zelia da bazante lebede. Ziapadoze, zaprato caparadoze, and de peteke teke 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 zata tata ko o meni miaza, a lepreto zati di 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 dioze, ianto catire doze de de, zanta balada zante lebe, ianta balada zante lebe de, ianta balada va, ianta lebe de lebe de, ianta bazante lebe, zati breco paliata, in ne conte. In the name of Jesus, as you have held that person's hand, I want you to pray, Lord. Give him or her interpretation of dreams. Lord, let that grace, 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 let it fall upon him. Let it fall upon her. Come on, one minute pray. One minute pray. One minute pray. One minute pray. Father, we pray. Let this one minute pray. Satu Pada. Take it, take it, take Zabrada zada la bada la bada baza ya tele vede le vede ya tala bala bada in the name of jesus finally you want to pray say lord visit me in my dreams the bible say and when jacob fell down he put his head on the stones he saw the angels ascending and descending lord reveal yourself to me some of you have been wanting and saying lord i want to see you lord reveal yourself to me lord tonight let me have an experience let me have an encounter in my dreams in the name of jesus come on begin to pray right now may it be revealed unto you come on pray in the name of Jesus, please, I want you to leave his hand and open your palms and close your eyes. I am seeing a white, um, a white sheet that they've put um, a rope around it, like the old thing, like something like that, wrapped like that. I'm seeing three of them that they've put in three people's hands right now. I want you to pray and say, Lord, any blessing you have given, you are giving to me, I receive it now. In the name of you, come on, pray, come on, pray. Zabrada zada da da boje, rendeke de de ede, 
za hunda za jezge dede eze zia bala baza 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 in the name of jesus i want you to pray your final prayer listen god is doing something in this house and any time let's don't take any meeting for granted any time we meet god does something special god does something special we're having our last day of our awakening experience a guy saw something in the spirit whilst i was ministering and recently last week sunday somebody else also saw something as i encountered angels in this house that person also saw some every day god is doing something here and please if you you step into this house it should be your heart desire lord let me go out of this place with a blessing let me go out of let, that should be your final prayer right now lord as i leave this place let me live with a blessing in the name of Jesus. Final prayer. Begin to pray. Zato in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your offering. Let me pray over it. Okay, let me pray over it. Amen. Let me pray over it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Just lift it up. Lift it up. Let me pray. Lift it up. Please speak over that offering. Speak over that offering. Tell the Lord to bless it. It can be the widow's might from the depth of your heart. Speak of it. Father, we want to thank you, bless you, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please let's receive our offering. Hi, family. Shall we take the announcement? Um, so on Saturday, we are going to have, or we are resuming our Saturday morning prayers from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., which is a weekend, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., sorry, which is the weekend in prayer. Then on Sunday, we are having 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. service. Then we'll be here again next week, Wednesday, exactly from 6 to 8 p.m do not miss any of the services and then make sure that you find yourself here shall we be on our feet as we take the closing prayer um pastor kobe thank you amen shall we lift up our two hands and share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us now and forevermore. Amen. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Once you go around and greet as many as people, I will not die. We live to declare the works of God Almighty. Amen. God richly bless you for coming.